Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, welcome to the Ask, Ask the Expert uh, show. Uh, I'm your host, Gary Cassidy, and I've got a very special guest today, Roberta Her uh, Hootie, uh, kind of like Hootie and the Blowfish in a sense. So uh, let's bring her on, and there we go. Roberta, right. how are you doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you, Gary. Great to be good. here. Hey, thanks for being on the show today. Um, so you are a IRA expert, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll kind of get into it a little bit. Sure, sure. So I'm, again, Roberta Hootie, and I'm with iPlan Group, and I've been in the self-directed IRA industry for quite a while now, period of years. And my background includes small business ownership, as well as understanding some small business plans from a different perspective. Uh, also, some real estate investing, but uh, currently doing some self-directed IRA investing. I know we'll probably focus a little bit more on real estate today, uh, but we also uh, have a lot of clients that are investing in uh, private entities, uh, which I do myself, as well as uh, private lending out of an IRA, so tax advantage. Uh, iPlan Group is a passive administrator, so that's what we do. We help clients uh, grow their wealth. Yeah, awesome. So you've been doing self-directed IRA. I've, I mean, I've known you for at least two or three years now. Yes. Um, you know, we got involved together uh, speaking at some like Alan Cowgill events where he yeah. raised, you know, shows people how to raise private money. Um, and you were talking to people about how like the self-directed IRAs uh, kind of coincide with, you know, uh, self-directed IRAs and private money, how it helps real estate investors. But before we kind of get to there, like, you know, we've got some people on the call that may not even really realize what a self-directed IRA is or never even heard of it. Kind of tell us, like, what is a self-directed IRA and kind of go from there? Sure. Uh, great question. A lot of people uh, do get a little confused with that term, self-directed. They think it's like a specific account that they're supposed to pick up. Uh, but basically, yeah. self-directed is just an industry term. So what it means is that you hold a portion of your retirement dollars or an entire account with a company like an IPM group that allows you to self-direct into real estate. So it's really an industry term. When it comes to those contribution limits, distribution rules, uh, they're the same as, as the account that you would hold right now. Just means that you have the money with a company like an iPlan group that says you get to decide what you're going to invest in. Yeah. So when I first heard about self-directed IRAs, the first thing I did, um, Roberta, is I actually went to my, I uh, had like money in like a 401k, right? Yes. And I went to this real estate seminar that said, hey, you should get into these self-directed IRAs. And I went right to my financial planning guy and said, "Hey, I want to move all my funds to a self-directed IRA." You know, it was like say, so this is a, I believe it was actually Charles Schwab at the time, and okay. he goes, "Yeah, we can do it, uh, self-directed IRAs." And he pulls out this piece of paper and it had like ten different stocks on it, and he says, "Which one would you like?" And I said, I, "No, I want to do like real estate." He goes, "Oh, well, you can't do that." So, right. like. When when somebody's talking about self-directed IRAs and like maybe want to buy real estate, how exactly do they do they do that? You know, essentially, like if they go to their financial planner, like Charles Schwab, and, they, and I know the guy finally admitted he just he knew about them, but he didn't, wasn't for sure about them. And then the, then right. his boss came in and said, "Well, if you move over there, there's more risk." And then you know what it basically boiled down to is they were going to lose a lot of commissions. So right. what exactly? How is the difference between like Charles Schwab and say like I play, uh, I group plan with self directed? Well, sure, Gary, that's a great example of how that term, the self directed, uh, kind of gets tossed around. Uh, in some cases, the self directed is like a marketing term. So Charles Schwab, in your example, is saying, "Sure, you can self direct with us," uh, but it's still kind of that traditional portfolio, right? Where they're saying, "What's your level of risk? You get to decide that, and then you get to self direct into one of our packages: A, B, C." or D, right? Uh, so yep. they say real estate, oh no, we can't do that, but we can put you in some uh, products, stocks, bonds, mutual funds that may be related to real estate, right? Uh, so they're familiar with that, but it's not that you can't direct your retirement dollars directly into real estate, a piece of physical property or do a private loan. It's just that they don't do it. Uh, so what we do is a unique custodial responsibility. Uh, it's not like an ETF. It's not a you know real quick in and out uh, electronic transfer, if you will. Uh, it's kind of clunky. Uh, real estate, we collect uh, the paperwork behind those investments and we have to make sure that it's compliant because we're regulated uh, by the Department of Labor, mm -hmm. the IRS. And we want to be sure that our clients' funds not only are secure and safe, uh, when they move those funds over, but they're also doing things that are permissible, right? Accepted by the IRS. Uh, so yeah. it's not that you can't do it. They just don't do it. 
Yeah, you, you did bring up some good points. Uh, I do, you know, as you know, I do a lot with self-directed IRAs with a lot of yeah. my clients and that's how I do a lot of my real estate deals. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll have someone do like a rollover on their 401k or like maybe they got some you know, annuity, whatever the case may be. But like when I come to like, say, your company, you verify and make sure all the documents are there, like the, the promissory note, the mortgage, yeah. and everything's secured, correct? Correct. Now, of course, a self-directed IRA investor is welcome to invest either with a secured note or unsecured. I mean, that is, we do see that happen. Uh, mm -hmm. But what we look for is the paperwork behind the investment, correct? The promissory note, uh, making sure that that is a legal document and that it would be mm -hmm. supported uh, as a legal and compliant investment. And we also look at the parties related to that investment. So uh, there's some things that are prohibited <laughs> your IRA and in, in some cases it's you. Uh, meaning if you title a piece of real estate, Gary, in your name, right? You're not gonna be living yeah. in that home. You're pro prohibited to that investment. So we look for things like that, make sure that you're not self-dealing or doing anything again that would uh, not be permissible. Yeah, well, you, I mean, again, yeah, that's awesome. You do bring up some even some more points there. You know, there's prohibited investments and then there's stuff mm -hmm. that, you know, the IRS says that you can. Uh, but, the, you know, what are some of the other things besides, say, real estate that you can invest into? Sure. So about um, a third of our clients are doing the physical real estate. So that's could be the rehab, um, a lease option would be in there, wholesaling, uh, buy and hold. So physical property. And then we have about a third of our clients that are doing uh, note investing. So something you're familiar with. So the yeah. IRA can give a loan, can take a loan. So we see a lot of people just creating that note. Again, unsecured or secured, and you're able to return those profits back to the IRA. So percentage, whatever interest rate you're charging, points if that's involved. Uh, also, uh, seller owner finance, we'll see that also in, a, in an IRA. And then about a third of our clients are doing uh, startup companies or what we call entity investing. And a startup company could be a part of that. So crowdfunding, a limited liability company, uh, private placement. So a lot of syndication, that, that term is getting bigger and bigger out there. A lot of people moving yes. from single family to multifamily. Uh, so you can do an entity. So you can invest into the entity itself. So, okay. Uh, but you did mention... Yeah things, right? So I might cover that here as well. Uh, so very few things that you cannot invest in with an IRA, and that would include uh, alcoholic beverages. Can't do that. Uh, you cannot invest in, I know some people kind of think that's kind of sad, but uh, you cannot do that. And also uh, you cannot invest in life insurance, uh, an S corporation. Uh, so very okay. few things that you cannot invest in, collectibles, antiques, uh, things that um, would be prohibited would include those. And then also just to mention, I mean, we do have a lot of clients. Uh, we have a client actually that has uh, a pig farm. And so their IRA owns a uh, owns the pigs, uh, owns the farm. But you can't, you know, the, the owner of the IRA uh, that is invested in the, the pigs, of course, can't go over there and feed them and certainly can't eat the bacon, yep. okay, because that would be prohibited. Uh, but we do have some very creative uh, investments uh, that we see come across uh, our, our table here at iPlan. Yeah, so I mean, that's you got a, you got a wide variety of stuff there, like say like the pig farmer. Now, you know, like part of the rules and regulations is like in real estate, if we used our own money for the real estate, we can't go swing the hammer to fix up the property. Like you mentioned, yeah. like the, the farmer can go feed the pig. So Correct. Correct. And the rule of thumb on that too, Gary, a lot of times uh, I'll talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. We really want to dig into uh, why you're asking about that prohibited uh, transaction and really figure out what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, but the basic rule of thumb is that you cannot do sweat equity on the investment titled in the IRA. So desk work, paperwork, overseeing those investments, but not doing that sweat work, you know, picking up the hammer, eating the pig, you know, mowing the grass, that kind of thing. Yeah. You want to keep yourself at an arm's length. Yeah. Before this uh, call today, I don't think anybody's ever realized that you could use your IRA money to invest in in pigs, you know, per se, like on a farm. Right. Right. Yeah. Some people I mean, probably have race horses. They might think that'd be more, you know, uh, profitable. I don't know. It depends what you know. Right. Here's the whole thing. <laughs> exactly. It feels what you're what you're most comfortable doing, so forth. But exactly. Uh, and this is really the whole point of self-directed IRA investing, too, Gary, is mm -hmm. being able to invest in what you know, what you're comfortable with, right? What might seem strange yeah. to you is every day for somebody else. 
Yeah. Now, it, and it doesn't have to be real estate or it doesn't have to be pigs. It could be business. Uh, you could probably can you could do some uh, certain coins, correct? In the in the states, not all of them, but there's a certain yeah. number. Of few, yeah, number there's of some things that would be permissible, but uh, precious metals is definitely the route you want to go. But coin collections, not per se. Okay. Precious Very metals good. and yeah, go ahead. Gold, could, silver. Could somebody do gold? Yes, gold yeah. for sure. We have a lot of clients that do that. Awesome. So now. You're also like prohibited. You now uh, there's prohibited to, uh, with people too. You can't loan to just anybody, correct? Correct. So let's say you want to give a private loan uh, to a son or daughter. That would be prohibited. So the prohibited persons are anybody ascending the family tree or descending in the family tree. So uh, you can't loan to mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, and you can't loan to the to the kids. Yeah. Now, what? Why is that? Like, you know, because I have a lot of people that will ask that, like, you know, uh, my explanation that I, the best explanation I've ever heard was, is, you know, obviously the IRS wants to control if you're giving money down the tree and stuff of that nature, down your family tree. But yeah, so it really has to do with the self-dealing. Uh, the purpose of the IRA is to grow your IRA for retirement. That's why it was set up back in 1974 uh, when uh, the uh, IRAs were created uh, through ERISA, uh, Legislation Employee Retirement Investment Savings Act. And that's where IRAs came from. It was an opportunity for you and I, people working, that uh, needed to save for their retirement, including small business owners. Uh, so that was the whole purpose of it. Then if you're getting into a situation where you're trying to grow for retirement, but you're also trying to benefit now, so maybe take care of the kids, uh, maybe do some things that are really not related to your retirement, that's why it's prohibited. And that's that's the bottom line on that. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, when it comes to my children with me here, Gary, I apologize. I was hoping that she wouldn't make any noise. But she did. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. What kind of dog is it? Uh, she's a mountain cur. Milo's a mountain cur with a boxer mix. She's actually very unusual and usually very calm, but not now. <laughs> well, that's, that's how it always works with uh, this pandemic going around. Everybody's working from home and we yes. got those challenges we have to get through. So, yeah, yeah. Get to it. back to the so, office, by the way, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait to the office. So, um, now, now you mentioned that um, IRAs have been around for a uh, long, self directed IRAs have been around for a long time. Yeah. When exactly was that date again? Did they start? 1974. 1974. That's when they were founded, part of ERISA, correct? And why don't people know about these? I mean, this is like a uh, gold mine to some people when it comes to investments and stuff. What yeah. you know, I I never heard of them until you know ten years ago when I got you know I was a financial planner and people you know never talked about self directed IRAs. Yeah, well, you know, it wasn't even well known back in 1974, right? It was really more into the early 80s that it became a thing. Uh, actually, it was kind of popular right here in Northeast Ohio. There was a company that um, a founder that started doing self-directed IRA investments himself. And within probably, you know, the first 10, 15, 20 years of this even, it wasn't really that well known, uh, but I would say in the past like five to 10 years, probably five, six years, we're seeing a lot of people entering the market as a custodian or an administrator, and it is becoming more popular. The only reason you're really not hearing about it, Gary, is because number one, people just have never heard of it, but also the financial advisors, the real estate and, uh, agents. I mean, more and more people are becoming educated and they know it's out there, but before that, they just didn't know. Uh, there's a lot of money in retirement accounts in the United States. Uh, if you look at individual retirement accounts, including employer sponsored plans, we're in the trillions of dollars. So probably wow. close to $29 trillion in retirement accounts. It's huge, but we're still only seeing a small portion of that being self-directed in the conversation we're talking about here today. So still yet under 200 billion being self-directed. So it's kind of just getting the, the message out there. And that's what, mm -hmm. that's what we're doing right here today. Uh, that's why I get excited about it because the tax advantages are outstanding and people that have not heard of it, they get a little frustrated sometimes. And they said, well, if I knew about this, even <laughs> years ago or yesterday, I would have done it. So yeah. it's important to get now, it. 
I've had accountants, uh, tax professionals that never really dealt with uh, self-directed IRAs neither. Yeah. You know, ha- do you run into that a lot? Do you have to educate them? I mean, how do you handle with that? You do. Uh, we always recommend, again, that uh, you work with your financial advisors, CPAs, uh, real estate attorneys, especially in an, uh, in the state that you are doing investments in, right? Because things can change state to state. Uh, we also like to uh, encourage people to work with professionals that are familiar with self-directed IRAs. That's very important. Uh, yeah. But uh, CPAs, I see some that are huge fans. Um, I remember being at a live event one time with a CPA in the audience. It was probably about you know 50 people in the room and it was local here to Northeast Ohio. And this CPA was just raving about self-directed IRAs. And I was like, wow, I wish I could just bring you to every event uh, that I go to because you don't Absolutely. hear people really with caution, right? Because it, mm-hmm. it's unknown. Uh, I think once they explore it, they know that this is a reasonable tool. So another yeah. example would be a, a, a CPA that I've used in the past, even with my small business, who reached out yeah. to me this past year and said, I need to be doing self-directed IRA investing. So uh, it's one extreme or the other. But this particular CPA has clients that do it. And he saw that it made sense. And when he realized yeah. this investments in a Roth IRA, uh, his clients were earning tax-free dollars. So yeah. he's like, wait a minute, you're not paying taxes on this? How did that happen? So sometimes- yeah, how, does it, how does that work? Yeah. How did that happen, right? So sometimes they'll see it that way and then they come back to you and circle around and say, who is this iPlan group or, or custodian, mm-hmm. so. Now, I don't know if you can answer this question or not. Um, and, and I know, it, okay, they roughly make you know an average of 10%. Uh, for me, especially my investors that I dealt with for over the years, and I mm-hmm. kind of grandfathered them in, but some uh, some might you know get a little bit lower interest rate as well. But you know, what kind of returns are you finding people uh, receiving if you can you know on an average? Well, interesting question. Uh, it's important uh, that everybody knows that this uh, presentation, anything I'm talking about here today, is for education, right? So yeah. we. We don't endorse, recommend, or uh, give you any absolutes, right? Due diligence on your part, critical. Uh, but glad you brought it up. I, I would agree with you. I think a lot of clients come to me and say, you know, in the traditional setting, uh, meaning with a financial advisor, I'm doing some great things. I feel responsible. There's some security here. But over time, yeah, maybe I'm earning, you know, 8%, 10%. Then they deduct the fees, and then it could be a little bit different. Uh, we're certainly not saying move away from those things. We're saying add another tool to your investment toolkit, right? And that could Mm -hmm. be the Roth IRA. That could be a traditional IRA. It could be real estate, that private lending. And we will see a very large range of return on investment because that has a lot to do with what? Your level of experience in the alternative asset that you're investing in. I find it Right. So it's essential for investors to work with professionals, coaches, educators, people that are winning in their space like yourself. uh, So they can understand what makes them more successful in that particular asset class. Uh, But we will see a huge range, Gary. Uh, Yes. Have we seen people make over 30, 40, 50 percent in a particular investment? Absolutely. Uh, But again, that would be very specific case study material maybe sometime we could come back and and bring some of that into uh into the conversation yeah Yeah. that uh that's good and you know and i didn't want to put you on the spot because i know that's kind of a tough question but you know you do have kind of an insight on that so um now i've had a lot of controversy uh with some of the uh, people that say you can't do this and what i what i mean by like you can't do this is there's certain things you can and can't do with a uh, self-directed IRA. One being is I helped a student of mine educate his insurance guy, uh, and his uh, insurance guy had like this co- had a company and wanted to invest in real estate, but mm-hmm. what he didn't realize is he could use his company's 401k and allocate a portion of it, mm-hmm. you know, not all of it, but a portion of it for self-directed. And it was mm-hmm. able to open up. I mean, this guy, he's been in business for, you know, like 30 some years and he had several hundred thousand, you know, he had millions of dollars basically in his IRA for the company. And I showed him how 
that he could actually allocate a portion of that to help this investor out for self-directed. Have you dealt much in that arena where it's like you, you're going to a, a corporation and doing like a, a, a self-directed with the corporation, like a portion of their 401k or anything of that nature? Have you dealt with that much or? Absolutely. And that's a great story because a lot of times we do not hear of current employers, right? So if you're currently employed at mm -hmm. the uh, place where you hold the 401k, most cases you're not able to bring even a portion of that over for self-directed IRA investing. So that story is pretty cool. I always encourage people to call their current employer or that custodian to make sure that they're not able to do that because sometimes you can do an in-service, it's called an in-service transfer or in-service rollover. So you can bring a portion of the funds, direct them into real estate by opening a self-directed IRA. But and, we, and we had to go through a process. I mean, you know, and we had to get permission from the actual uh, person that set up the, you know, the 401k and things of that nature. So there was a right. lot of process, but it, but it's possible. It is possible. Uh, I will mention too, Gary, uh, with this unfortunate time that we're dealing with, with the uh, quarantine and uh, job loss. I mean, it's been into the millions uh, of, across the country. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind, if you're listening today and maybe you have been uh, laid off or you're unemployed for whatever reason, and you do have a 401k, that 401k is available to you, even in a layoff, uh, to go ahead and roll that over and get it working for you in a self-directed IRA investment. So this could be a good time to explore that uh, for some of you. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I talked to a lot of my students right now that you know they're out there looking. I mean, the stock market's up and down right now. Uh, you know, people are getting laid off. Right now is a perfect time for, like, say, my students to go out and find uh, more investors for their, like, their real estate business. And, then, of course, you got to follow the uh, rules and regulations of the uh, SEC, Security yeah. and Exchange. This is to, you know, you can't just go up to these strangers and, and uh, get this information, right? right. Exactly. So, Yeah. Yeah, you know all about that. <laughs> exactly. <so. laughs> sure. Yeah, in private lending. But I do want to say that this just really is about education. So the more that you become educated as an investor about self-directed IRAs, you're really raising the conversation in those uh, cases where you're even talking to friends and family people that you've known for years, maybe somebody that you've met at a real estate meetup or a workshop or a boot camp. You have a relationship with them and you're able to talk about self-directed IRAs and openly uh, really bring value to, to the table. Because now that investor that said, yeah, you know, I've got the money outside of an IRA. I wanted to move over and invest with you, let's say, or, you know, do a loan for your rehab or whatever it might be. Uh, mm -hmm. But I didn't know I could do it with a tax advantaged account. Now I know. Now you've become somebody really of, um, I would say, a higher, higher trust, right? Because yeah. you are saying, hey, I'm going to not only help you with this private investment, but I'm going to show you how to do it tax advantage. So super important mm -hmm. to get that education, educate the people that you talk to. It's not a fit for every situation. Uh, it's not something you need to force down anybody's uh, throat, so to speak. Uh, either they're going to be able to do it or, or they can't. Uh, yeah. But I will tell you, especially when I speak to live audiences, which I, I miss a little bit, uh, when I do talk about certain concepts and you see people's faces just like light up because they honestly did not know that they yep. could do this and they're very successful uh, investors. So you definitely want to talk about it. And I think it adds value to your, to your business. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, you, you hit the nail on the head when like I was sitting in the audience from the first time I heard about self director IRAs in my eyes, they were huge. I, I could tune in, you know, I've never heard of them. And I was doing financial services, annuities for people. And, you know, of course, you know, the insurance companies at the time, they wanted you to focus on their products. So they didn't want to educate you right. too much on the other stuff. But right. uh, um, what are some of the like, tax advantages of somebody putting money into a self-directed IRA? Okay, great question. So the tax advantages, in a nutshell, are, are tax deferred or tax free growth. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a traditional IRA, for example, and you invest or you, I should say, acquire property titled in your IRA traditional. 
And let's say you happen to buy the property right, just for purpose of purpose of purposes of the conversation. You purchase the property for let's say a hundred thousand dollars, and you just happen to buy it right, and you sell it the next week for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But it's titled in that traditional IRA. So the fifty thousand dollars that you return back to the IRA. Now, in this case, you're going to return one hundred and fifty thousand. Everything goes back to the IRA. You want to make sure that everything stays inside of that IRA, nothing outside of it. $150,000 returns back to the traditional IRA. The $50,000 that you just made in profit is tax deferred. So at 59 mm -hmm. and a half, when you're eligible to take that money out without penalty, that $50,000 has grown tax deferred, but you're going to pay tax on that at 59 and a half when you take that distribution, right? Or you take that money out, yep. you're going to pay the tax rate whatever that net effective tax rate is for you at that time. The okay. very same example, let's say you do it with a Roth IRA, okay? Purchase the house 100,000, sell it 150,000, 150,000 goes back to the Roth IRA. Now that $50,000 profit that we talked about is tax free to you at 59 and a half when you take that out without penalty, completely tax free. Now let's okay. say you that over and over and over. That's over. That's what we call the growth. So instead of the stock bond mutual fund, you're doing the real estate. But those mm -hmm. profits, especially in this case, $50,000 on one transaction. So you are able to grow that bucket, if you will, tax free. So that's the advantage. That's why people are doing the self directed IRA in investments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this that's and that's awesome. Those are you know awesome things. So my background, I spent 17 years in the insurance world, Roberta. And one of the things that I always loved was health savings accounts. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it was one of the most brilliant plans available for self-employed folks. Okay. Right. And, you know, there was a lot of tax advantages of it and things of that nature. And uh, we will, that's a whole other topic, right? But you can also do a health savings account self-directed IRA, correct? Yes, you can. I'm glad you mentioned that. A health savings account is a particularly, particularly very uh, interesting account because when you, I should say powerful, not interesting, powerful, when you do the uh, contribution on a health savings account, uh, it's tax deductible. And then also when you pay for a qualified medical expense, it's a tax free mm -hmm. withdrawal. So you're getting the benefits of both that traditional and Roth in essence in one account and it can be self-directed. So you can grow that account for right now, medical expenses, as well as mm -hmm. growing long-term care. Uh, yeah. We do have a lot of clients that use multiple accounts and you can partner the accounts. So instead of having a co-investor as being an individual, you could actually have your uh, accounts like a health savings account. There's also a Coverdell education savings account. It's a specialty account uh, for children, uh, children, okay. grandchildren, nieces, nephews, uh, but it can be partnered into a real estate investment, even if that's 5%, 10% of the investment. And which is, you know, and it grows tax free. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Which is deferred growth. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Now, what about like, um, you know, you got your 401ks. What about Roth, you know, 401s or Roth IRAs? You know, is that something that's able to be self-directed as well? Yeah. So there's actually uh, like seven different accounts. So you've got the traditional, the Roth, the health savings account, which we just talked about, Coverdell education savings account. And then for the small business owners out there, you also have the solo 401k or a SEP or simple IRA, so small business plans. Now, you can certainly reach out to uh, Gary or myself after this and we can connect and, and get mm -hmm. on the phone and find out you know, more of the detail. Uh, you can of course go to iplangroup.com and take a look there as well. But there's qualifications yeah. for those particular accounts. The okay. power of those accounts, especially with a solo 401k, for those of you that don't know what it is, it is uh, just like that 401k that you hold at a, uh, an employer maybe that you work for now, except in this case, you're the employer as well as the employee. So you are making the contributions on both ends, right? So of course you have to have earned income uh, to make those contributions. But in this case, depending on your age, for those of you that are 50 and over, in this account, mm -hmm. 
you would be able to potentially contribute up to $62,000 annually, which is much more powerful in terms of buying power when you're doing self-directed IRA investments as compared yeah. to a traditional Roth where your contribution is $6,000 annually or $7,000 annually, depending on your age. So uh, very powerful yeah. accounts. And so the SEP and simple can be done that, uh, that way as well. One last comment, Gary, on the solo, that employer plan. You mm -hmm. can also have a Roth component on that. So what that means is on the employer side of that account, it's always going to be a tax deferred uh, contribution as the employer. But on that employee side, you can add the Roth. So you can get the best of both worlds in that individual account. I mean, that's a lot of powerful stuff you just said there that to help these small businesses out, that maybe are struggling and, you know, maybe need a little extra tax savings, uh, put a little bit of extra money set aside. I do, you know, we speak at a lot of these uh, um, events, live events, we get the crowd. And one of, one of the questions I ask in one of my presentation is who has a financial planner? So who has that person that understands, you know, all this stuff. And there's literally like one or two people out of like, a, you know, 50 or hundred people that actually have had a, a, a ongoing financial planner. And they may not understand, you know, some of this, like the self-directed IRAs and the other benefits that could help them out. So it's a real eye-opening, especially for these small business owners, because they don't have somebody really helping them. And somebody like yourself, you know, with the iPlaying group could definitely, you know, help them out. So um, you and you mentioned, uh, did you say the Coverdale program? What yes, kind of yeah, sure. Coverdell. It's a Coverdell education savings account. And this account is really great, uh, especially for those of you with, like I mentioned, children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, because you can actually make the contribution on behalf of the child. Uh, the okay. only, only requirement for this particular account is that the child has a social security number. So as soon as that number is in place, literally your infant child can become an investor, right? You can make a yeah. two dollar annual contribution to that account. Now, it may not sound like a lot of money, uh, but $2,000 a year over time, if you're doing that over a period of years, you can build that up and again, direct that account into real estate, uh, maybe to own a 5% interest in a real estate investment. That's pretty good. Yeah. And then the account allows you to have a tax-free withdrawal when you pay for any educational expense. And that can be uh, not only for private school, but it can be the books, uh, the uniforms, things like that. It does not have to be just for college, uh, but then the account would be, uh, it lives for 30 years, by the way, but the contributions stop uh, when the child is 18 years of age. So it's just another tool to, to grow that money uh, for that child that's not yet working. Uh, if the child <laughs> is working when child you know children get a little bit older again this is another conversation there are ways to of course have roth for the child and many people find that to be more beneficial okay okay well i mean you've you've I've definitely hit a lot of hot topics here um do you have any type of like an education series or anything that you can give the uh to the listeners uh viewers uh just go to your website what what does that look like how do they get a hold of you things of that nature Thank you. Yeah, great question. So the, the best education that we do offer, and, and it's not all the books, tapes, DVDs, and that kind of thing. So don't expect me to say that. Uh, honestly, the 30-minute IRA strategy, this coaching uh, moment, if you will, uh, just give us a call. You can set that up uh, right on our website. Uh, there's a way for you to just go ahead and uh, do that uh, to schedule an IRA strategy session. You can also okay. reach out to me you know, directly as well. Uh, Again, the website's there uh, and I can give you the phone number whenever you're ready. Uh, but mm -hmm. I really recommend doing that one on one because there's a lot of individual uh, things or I should say uh, details to each investor. And we really open up a lot of doors uh, to talk about what you qualify for, what types okay. of accounts and what makes sense for your strategy, that's always the best place to start. Uh, second of all, we do have a lot of good information on the website in terms of our articles and blog research. And we're also building a calendar. Uh, we uh, travel quite a bit live. We have Protect Wealth okay. events that we're big on. Uh, we are moving all that to online, Gary. So in a short answer, in the next about mm, two weeks, you're gonna be seeing a lot more of that build. Uh, okay. so 
yeah. and check our website for that. But we are doing a lot more online uh, like we are here today. Yeah. So Awesome. So one, one last question. I know we kind of maybe jumped around a little bit. Um, I, I've heard of, you know, and I've actually seen what they call checkbook IRAs. Are you uh, familiar with that term? I am familiar with the term. It's kind of like there's the good and bad with it. What's that? I said there's good and bad with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's kind of like that self-directed, right? Uh, that term gets tossed around a lot. So that's why we kind of go, oh, okay. What does that <laughs> mean by a checkbook IRA? Uh, yeah, checkbook yeah. IRA. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Can you explain maybe what that means? Um, you know, I I know some guys that have a checkbook IRA and uh, be quite frankly, uh, you know, they might be breaking some rules just by writing them you know, check just to buy like a big screen TV type of deal. So, yeah. yeah. I, so, so you've got to be very disciplined when you have a checkbook IRA. You do. So, uh, we, we don't set up a, a checkbook IRA at, in that sense, the way you're describing it there. Uh, a lot of our clients uh, do talk about, uh, or I would say more so not our clients, a lot of people out there, they say, well, I just can't get the funds to the table. I can't get the transactions uh, processed fast enough. I can do it myself. So I really want to just open an IRA. I'm going to fund you know, an LLC or uh, whatever they're gonna do. Uh, there are permissible ways to get money into an entity with an IRA. So have a, an IRA owned LLC, and that's something we could talk about. That would be a solution possibly to this. Uh, okay. But I tell you, uh, one of the biggest biggest differences between iPlan Group and other custodian and administrators out there is that we have same day processing, which is something we do not charge extra for. Uh, we're a boutique firm. We're a little bit more responsive. We have a very personal client experience. So when you need uh, to request that a bill be paid or you need to get funds to the table, especially in an auction or a wholesale mm -hmm. situation, critical, uh, we're same day processing. So we find even though we serve uh, clients outside of Northeast Ohio or out of the state, uh, we're still very quick to get things done. And people just find that need to go to this checkbook LLC is reduced, number one. They feel more confident because they're not um, really being vulnerable to a prohibited transaction or a violation. Uh, so that's that's a great solution as well. Uh, hopefully I've answered most of your questions around that that topic. It, it can really be an interesting topic. Uh, that, that's a very, yeah, I mean, it is very interesting. You know, I, I've seen them, I've heard of them. I know guys that set them up and, and I, you know, uh, at, at the very, when I first heard about them, I thought that it was a brilliant thing to do. But then the more and more I look into it, uh, you've got to be a really disciplined uh, person or you can really get yourself into some trouble. You, you can. Know, have fairly and, penalties and. Yep. You know. And it, it can be an area for the IRS to almost be a little bit uh, heightened, right? To the audit when yeah. they see a, you know, a checkbook IRA. And who wants the IRS coming at them? Yeah. Yeah. So. And you, you know, potentially you could really blow up your entire IRA if you have a prohibited transaction. You really have to yeah. ask yourself, is it worth it? So finding a company that fits your investment model and is able to be responsive and, and assist you uh, can save yeah. a lot of headaches. Um, yeah. lot of headaches. Well, awesome. Well, Roberta, I, I really appreciate you being on the show today and uh, you've done a great job. Uh, any last words for uh, the, all the viewers? Well, uh, Last words. Thank you. <laughs> uh, seriously, thank you. Thank you for taking uh, the time to to be with us today. Uh, thank you, Gary, for having me. Uh, I'm very passionate about self-directed IRAs. I'm very passionate about people uh, taking control of their retirement and uh, doing things, uh, especially in times when we see things in the stock market going up and down, uh, to enable people really to have some confidence outside of the stock, mar stock market. Not that you leave it, but that you're able yeah. to really stabilize yourself. Uh, Self-directed IRAs really offer a great opportunity for individual investors. And if you are doing traditional stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, you can do that with self-directed IRAs as well. And maybe we can cover that another time as well. But just want to yeah. express that it's a great, great uh, topic, and please uh, feel free to explore more. Absolutely. So and you can get a hold of Roberta at iplangroup.com, right? All right. It's iplangroup.com, and you can call yep. us directly as well, 440-484-5566. And where are you yes. guys located at? 
We're in uh, Westlake, Ohio, which is just on the Westlake. west side of Cleveland. Okay, very cool. So, yeah. well, again, Roberta, I appreciate your time today. And uh, it's a, this is an awesome topic. I love this topic. So I'm sure we're going to have you back on uh, down the road just because there's so much on this topic that, you know, we can't cover in the 30, 45 minutes we've been on here. So I agree. again, guys, thanks, you know, thanks for tuning in today and uh, we'll see you next Monday. Thank you. Thank you.